It's like, hey, see you guys got some kids there. I've got some kids. Maybe our kids should get together and play sometime. Yeah. And my wife was like, okay, lunatic person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, somehow you, you told her that uh, you said something very vague, but that you, you, you work in the, the entertainment industry and the production. I said I was a male entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so my wife was like, okay, cool. So when I get home, she's like, I met somebody in the entertainment industry today. And I'm like, that's, that never happens. It's so vague. It's so, yeah, it is so yeah. vague. Um, and so uh, I was like, uh, okay, what, you know, t tell me more about it. So anyway, she winds up telling me about it. And it's like, he lives, you know, not too far from here. going i'll use that to either leave or i'll just be like oh hey yo everything's fine and then i'll, ha I'll keep hanging out so i definitely had an emergency exit in the case <laughs> that you were a psychopath right and i have add so i had no rip cord at all going into this i did not think that far ahead um i'm just lucky i didn't get murdered yeah you could have been murdered I mean, easily we both could have been murdered we don't know very easily yeah. murdered all right um i it's don't put up much don't. of a fight and we don't like murder so that's good Collectively? Collectively, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In a business sense. Well, in a business sense, it's different. <laughs> Correct. Totally different. Yeah. So, um, business murders, <laughs> definitely on the table. Uh, Here's so. another tangent I just want to throw out there, and I am going to let you get to it, but I do have the best business idea that anybody's ever come up with. Would you like me to give it to you for free? Yes. Okay. Uh, it does require for you to be very, very heartless. So, but you're gonna be incredibly rich. So that's all you have to, you just have to be heartless. One easy step. And then you're gonna be, be heartless. Rich. Here it is, Pet Hitman. Stay with me for a minute. <laughs> uh, pets seem like a really good idea at first. And then what happens is after a while, you stop loving them. You don't admit that to yourself and maybe your wife doesn't either, maybe your kid doesn't either. But at some point, you're like, eh, this dog is kind of, we're not so into it anymore. But you can't do anything about that. But now you can, because I'm just going to kill your dog. Not me. I'm giving you this idea. Um, you're going to go online, and you're going to say, look, I love this dog, but we have to kill it. Now, here's, a, here's another example. I know people who have gone deep, deep into debt um, on pet medical bills. I mean, you get to a certain point with a dog where you're like, all right, it's going to be $14,000 to fix this dog for another year, or we kind of just need to let this dog die. That's I don't not a know. good investment. It's not. Um, yeah. You're not going to get your return on that. You're not going to sure. get that money back. So, uh, so what I want someone here, an, an enterprising person either online or in the room, please take this with you today. And I hope that you'll use it to uh, don't actually go kill any pets. But, uh, but it is a good idea. That's all I'm saying. It's a good idea. And now, Dungeons and Dragons. Segway. The podcast. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, Christopher and I had been friends for a little while, and he approached me with this idea. About and, killing pets. Yes, about <laughs> killing pets. Uh, no, about uh, doing a D&D &D themed podcast. Now, uh, for those of you who were here yesterday, uh, I have never, ever, even to this day, played a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I have observed a few now um and uh hope to do more and hope to you know get in a in a game but uh he won't let me and i don't have any other friends so it's fine um <laughs> one day i'll just i'll 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 play off all all the characters i'll just do yeah, them all myself by yourself. like an eddie murphy nutty professor scenario seems respectable um so uh yeah so anyway um we started talking through the logistics of this now i do have a background uh doing uh podcasts, everything from just a single talking head to a guy that does interviews by phone and on Skype and stuff like that, and all the way up to uh, recording uh, comedians on a moving tour bus, which has a lot of background noise and is incredibly problematic. Uh, so I got to solve a lot of problems on that one. Uh, and that's something that I really enjoy doing, uh, solving technical problems and finding out how can I make this thing that shouldn't work very well go ahead and work. Um, and so, uh, just to buff my stats a little bit at this point, I'm, Good. I'm at about 5.4 million listens on the various podcasts that I've had work 
uh, gotten to work with. Um, and one of those is an internal podcast, and I have no idea. It's at Oracle, and I, I don't know what what we'll be expecting on numbers from that. I don't even know if they'll track it. But we shall see. Um, so uh, I've gotten uh, very lucky in being able to do this. And uh, so one of the things that uh, that I've been able to do is sort of get a chance to flex a lot of the capabilities that I've learned over the years of doing audio. I also have a background in doing uh, music for television and radio and film uh, and stuff like that. Um, and uh, sound design for various... What are some of the shows you've done? Uh, I have done uh, NFL Total Access. Uh, I have done ad campaigns for the Discovery Channel, MTV, and Chevrolet. I've never heard of any of those. Yes, they're all very small local businesses. Uh, this is like niche yes. kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, I have done work for uh, quite possibly the worst sitcom in the world, Two Broke Girls. Um, that was not. That can't be the worst sitcom ever. I don't know. Uh, I, I if you know of a worse, please come and let me know. Uh, uh, what, was the I, what was the Charlie Sheen sitcom? That uh, was so popular. Two and a half men. Two and a half men. Yes. It's terrible. That's a yeah. terrible show. Uh, I, um, I I'll fight you if I, you. I, mean. I did tune into that expecting to see a little person and was <laughs> sorely disappointed. Um, like uh, what was the guy who played Willow? Uh, <laughs> did you know that Willow's coming back? I did not. The Disney app, uh, I, this might be the only reason I get the Disney app, or the Disney channel they're coming out with. They're, they're going to do a Willow live action series. Uh, everybody knows what Willow is, right? I know. That's what, yeah. that's what I was like, how? OK, I'm in. Uh, I don't know if Val Kilmer's a part of it, but I really hope Val he Val Kilmer's is. part will be played by Katy Perry. <laughs> I hope that Val Kilmer's at least involved as like uh, maybe he could be the bad guy or something. I don't maybe know. Maybe so. You know he can't talk anymore. What are you talking about? He had uh, yeah he had uh, a, a laryngectomy. What are you talking about? Val Val Kilmer, look it up. It's really weird. When did this happen? I saw him in a movie and I was watching him and I was like, who is this strange guy? He's had he's also had a lot of facial surgery. Well, I knew about the facial thing. And uh, I'm like, this weird guy. They dubbed all of his lines, and then the credits roll, and it's Val Kilmer. And I'm like, that's that, that's not Val sad. Kilmer. And then I go look it up, and it, no, it is Val Kilmer. And he couldn't talk, so they had some guy uh, he was uncredited the, dub his lines. He was in the MacGyver movie. Remember the MacGyver movie? I don't. Okay. I missed that one. It didn't make it very long. Anyway, <laughs> he was the bad guy in the MacGyver movie. Um, this has nothing to do with anything. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so um, one of the things that I really love about this is um, I've gotten to do original music for the show. Uh, I have uh, do a lot of sound design, uh, some originals, some I'm sourcing out from other sources because they're really hard to do. Uh, our HOA really frowns upon making a giant fireball in your backyard just to get a sound effect. Um, Which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so much so, they've asked me not to do it anymore. Um, and I, I'm i nothing if not compliant. Uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, we've got a, a, a bunch of stuff. I don't know if I, should I send you half volume here just so I don't explode the room? You're not going to do, Let's there's see. no spoilers here for tomorrow, is no, there? No, there's okay. not, All but right. hold on just a second. My audio, audio, let me see here, is still coming out of the regular. Let's try this. Ready? There we go. Did y'all hear that? Very punchy. Um, yeah, so uh, the first time we recorded, uh, we rolled in with a hodgepodge of microphones. I have, uh, Christopher has some professional mics, I have some professional mics, and so we sort of mix and matched for the, uh, the voice talent there. And then uh, the second game, we had headsets, right? We did. Second, you were on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Steven was in the second game, actually. Steven Sanders, uh, and ladies so and gentlemen. And so was uh, Sally, Sally, His girlfriend Sally Hayden. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we uh, we when we're not doing a live in front of people show, we wear these broadcast, you know, sports broadcaster style headset mics. That way, they have full use of their hands. And when they do this, it doesn't do what it's doing right now because it's really <laughs> annoying when you're trying to mix it and it's like 12:30 at night and you're still editing and all you want to do is hit the guy that started talking like this in the head with the microphone. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that that one little boom arm right there has just saved so many lives, you guys. That's so true. I will rage. Uh, 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, so, uh, and, uh, you know, from a technical standpoint, we started with a, a, an eight-channel audio interface uh, that I use to record everything. I use Reaper uh, to record everything. If you guys do any podcasting stuff, a lot of people use Audacity, and some people use um, uh, Audition. Audition, thank you, uh, from Adobe. Um, and I'd love to have an in-depth discussion with anybody that wants to know more about Reaper. It's a, just a killer program, uh, and it's got a lot of really nice features that make editing way easier. And, uh, and it's, it's incredibly affordable. I mean, the thing that people always say about Audacity is like, well, it's free, but mm -hmm. I mean, Reaper is as close to free as you can get, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, if you make less than 20 grand a year doing audio for a living, then it's 60 bucks. And if you make more than that, it's 240. So it's not terrible. Um, and I mean, realistically, uh, I really like the guys at Reaper. They're nice guys, but you can use it eternally because it's just got a nag screen and it's not feature uh, stripped or anything like that. It's the right. full fat version. You just have to wait 15 seconds before or after you launch it to go into it. That's mm -hmm. when the little timer goes out. And then, yeah. But uh, if you like it and you use it, you I know there's a four play for joke in there somewhere, but I'm just not going to touch <laughs> it. I'm, just not, I'm not even going to go there. That's okay. Uh, yeah. You already made the joke because you said you weren't going to touch it. That's the four play joke. <laughs> Uh, rim shot. I don't have one of those loaded up, unfortunately, yeah, right now. Need that for the it's game, a big swing think. and a miss on my part. We might you guys, need a rim I'm shot. So sorry. Now that you mention it, I don't know. Uh, I can make that happen. Uh, so, um, so what I have here, and uh, I'll show you guys a little bit more later. But uh, for the uh, for the live game, uh, I actually use a hardware recorder now, and then uh, I use my computer to play back all of these sound effects here, which are all these little multicolored buttons. This is a program. Uh, called Ableton Live, and uh, DJs use it a lot. Uh, a lot of uh, houses of worship use this now, which is super weird. Um, but anyway, so I've got sort of these banks of sound effects that I can call up at any time. So I've got punches. And uh, I've got uh, arrows. And uh, some more punches. It's very intense. We have a monk in our game. Can you, can you tell? Yes. Uh, we've got some sword hits here. That's actually a sword hitting uh, body. I won't tell you whose. If you guess it, though, you win some candy. Uh, and then uh, everything from, like, uh, you know, we've got some, some fireball crash stuff. And again, I'm sorry about your car. Um, but we've got uh, some good, let me turn this up a little bit. We've got some uh, blood. It's a nice one. And then just a, a body falling over. Mm -hmm. That's just the, yeah, that's, that's the death shot. And so those are all sort of my, my battle sound effects um, sort of loaded up there. And then uh, I have some uh, special sound effects that I won't tell you what they are. But th this is some some fun stuff that uh, that I actually got to design. So this is this is for like a very uh, evil moment in the game. So that's the sound you hear when Kyle takes his shirt off, by the way. <laughs> I just mic'd it, and that's that's, that's what, what you get. Yeah. It's just, it's a... Uh, just a room mic, wasn't it? It's like it? jazz. Yeah, it really uh, yeah. and then um, we've got some really big uh, hits, like... <coughs> like that. <coughs> Excuse me, in this one. Need some water? It's got my germs on it. That's but. okay. <coughs> Germ water is better than no water. <coughs> it's better than choking to death. That's in the Bible. On your second panel ever. <coughs> yeah, and then we've got, uh, I've got a bank of scene-specific sounds, which I'm not going to play any of those for you. Because but here's the cool thing. He's, he sort of creates these sounds, right? And he sort of, I give him like an idea. Here's the script of how I think things are going to go, and here's the sounds I need. But we also know that there's going to be perhaps sounds that we just don't even know you know, that stuff could happen. We just don't know what it is. So he kind of keeps a grab bag of some random stuff in there too, just to be able to throw in um, because he's playing these live, you know, while yeah. we're playing the game. Uh, now the first couple times we did it, we didn't really have that. We didn't, we just didn't have that at play. 
the, the third game that we just played that should be coming in the next month or two, um, we had live sound effects for the very first time. Yes, and we will have live sound effects for this game as well. So I do have just a, a huge bank of stuff that I can access at any given times, like bones. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> uh, in case somebody grabs a cleaver. Um, just a lot of breaking things. <laughs> and, uh, uh, contrast. yeah, we've got explosions, big explosions. Um, you know, y you never know where D and D is going to turn. So it's, it's always good to have some automatic machine gun fire, uh, you know, helicopters, things like that. Um, because, yeah, we try not to limit the players. We don't want to limit the players in any way. It's big fireballs, um, yeah, fun stuff. Uh, and then I literally do have machine guns and cannons and all kinds of bric-a-brac. Someday uh, we'll find a use for all of that, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that, that can be really interesting if I sense something coming up on the horizon. It's sort of my job to quickly filter down through all of these folders and slam something onto the game board uh, as quickly as I can. Uh, and I do have only 10 slots open for tomorrow, so keep it snug. I'll Wait, try. Camp. I'll do my best. <laughs> Usually it's the players that drive it off the road. It's not me. It so is. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and, and that's a lot of fun. And then uh, one of my favorite things that uh, I get to do is uh, the the music for the show. So I actually did the, the theme song, and I won't play the whole thing for you, but uh, uh, so for those of you that don't know what the Dungeon Booth is, it's a combination of uh, voice actors uh, who primarily do anime, uh, and then uh, Dungeons & Dragons. So um, my thought process was trying to mesh the two worlds of how do I get a really nice ridiculous anime intro song and also have it be sort of medieval, mm -hmm. um, which is just a peanut butter in my chocolate, chocolate in it my peanut butter scenario. Be, if you're doing it right. Yeah, so uh, I'll play you a little bit of this right quick because uh, this was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> so it starts off with the orchestral stuff and then Stop shredding. <laughs> then it goes into a synth solo, and then there's a uh, there's it just gets a, stuck in my head every time. There's I a love polka that song section. So much. <laughs> Uh, that part's really bad. The klezmer's really good, though. It is. I love it, that part. Yeah. Um, there is uh, just one bagpipe toot. A flute solo. Yeah, there's that, a flute that solo. That part's really good. Um, just a guy screaming. A man with a tambourine. <clears throat> yes. Just one man. A screaming tambourine It was man. funny, though, because we got to the point where we were like, all right, we need a theme song. And Aaron's like, oh, I'll take a crack at it. I was like, okay. So what I'm thinking is, is just, you know, something really cool and uh, driving, you know, and uh, but... Not too electronic, you know, and, 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 you know, orchestrated a little bit maybe to give it some, like, epicness or whatever. He's like, oh, okay, okay, I've got an idea. And then, like, 48 hours later or something, he's just like, what do you think about this? I was like, what? <laughs> That's incredible. So did yeah. you already have an idea for it before I even talked to you? Probably. Yeah, a little bit of one. It, it was sort of, I, I sort of knew, because um, at that point I had watched uh, the first season and a half of My Hero Academia. Yeah. And, you know, my brother-in-law is huge into anime. Sure. So the themes for, like, Attack on Titan and um, One Punch Man and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I sort of had a, a concept of musically what what you should be expecting from the anime world. The just smushing that into medieval times, that was the part where it's like, I want to make that happen mm -hmm. uh, because that is sort of the essence of the show. Yeah. And I feel it's on brand and trying to pull those two uh, worlds together. And so, yeah, I, I sort of had an idea. And I think the first pass I did was a little too Danny Elfman-esque. And so we, we revised it to where 
there it wasn't all minor chords yeah, the right, whole right, time, right, right. entire time. It uh, sounded like a nightmare before Christmas, the D and D game a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if anybody wants to start that, hit me up. Let's do that. I'm down. Uh, you can be Jack Skellington. I'm fine with it. Seriously. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so uh, that's sort of my background. I am I am a multi instrumentalist, and so I I literally played everything that you heard there. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, just but ran into this dude down the street, just driving my bike. <laughs> met his wife. Like, uh, yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah, pretty amazing. Luck- luckily, you didn't pull that uh, emergency phone call ripcord because <laughs> we mean, we wouldn't be sitting here. There were no red flags at all. Like you seem you seemed like such a just a normal nice dude. I was like, well, all right, we're gonna get through this first one here. Yeah. And uh, how do you feel about that choice now? i everything worked out great. Oh, okay, yeah, good. I'm fine good. with it. Um, I have a. A paper here with all your red flags. Oh, perfect. Okay, <laughs> let's start running that down. No, um, <laughs> uh, no, it was. It's a. It's been a lot of fun. So, um, yeah. As far as the process is concerned, uh, basically, Christopher slaves like for weeks to months. I don't know how much it was for this last game. It's best you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can only guess how much time you spent cutting out figurines. A lot of paper cutting. Well, that's the thing. Like I, uh, I had a partnership with a company called Roll20 uh, for the first couple games, and they were sponsoring our show, and they're wonderful people, and I love them. Uh, and I also had a sponsorship for a physical dice tower company that makes luxury, uh, all kinds of accessories. So it's like two very different sponsors, one of which is like, play your game online, and one of which is like, no, play it with these wooden things in, you know, in person. <laughs> and I do think that was reflective a little bit of where I was at with the game. Like, what do I want this to be? Do I want this to be, we can get it on screens and we're going to just do everything digital, or are we going to be physical and in, and in person? And ultimately, I think uh, I decided to go the physical route. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a bit of a throwback, you know, to the older days. And uh, but I also think this resurgence of D and D that we have right now, where it's like a golden age, where D and D's really come back to the fore, has made it so that companies can make this incredible stuff, like dice that will you can't believe, and like yeah. this incredible artistic works of art. And something about the tangibility of that really speaks to me. I'm going on a tangent here, but I also think one of the great things about D and D should be that it's a way for you to get together with your friends or your family. Uh, and you all put your phones down for five minutes, and you all can be together, right? Um, when I was a kid... Except it's seven and a half hours. Except it's 12 hours of your life, um, <laughs> the way I do it. Um, uh, when I was a kid, the, you know, my parents, uh, people used to be more connected. Um, for, for example, there's a, sp- a, group, a spades group that get together and play spades. They started playing spades 35 years ago, and they still... They don't even live in the same neighborhood anymore, but they all still come together to play spades and stuff. Like the, our generation just does not have that, and uh, and you really miss it. And this is part of why I see D and D coming back to the fore. Is like people are like, God, I just I want to be around people and do something, but I'm I'm so awkward and I don't want to talk to people. Uh, what do we do? All right, well let's pretend we're someone else mm-hmm. and we can all get together and feel comfortable, you know? Like, and that's great. Let's do that. Which, by the way, that's just the key to a healthy social life, anyway. <laughs> For those of you who don't know that, I you know I turned forty one and it's like yeah I don't know who I am at this point. For, I mean it's and that's fine. It's now fine. now we're really getting into the real panel. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, and then when I was seven. <laughs> uh, so so that's all to say that um, I think the physical aspect of it is really cool, and that's part of the reason why I sort of went down that path is I, I want I want to print out the paper and I want to have the physical tokens and I want to have those things because it means that. We aren't looking at our phones, and we're we're sitting, we're looking at each other, you know, and we're we're actually playing the game together. Well, that's one of the other things, just from a podcast standpoint, of it not being, uh, you know, on screen or the the you know the dice and everything not being virtual. A lot of the podcasts that I've worked with, it's it's a guy that's like, I I want to do interviews, and it's like, great, like what room in your house are you going to do it? Oh, I'm just going to do it over Skype. And you know that's a that's a practical solution to a problem of distance, and even in the DFW area, just a, a problem of time. You know, a lot of pe- a lot of times uh, people can't drive 45 minutes to do a 20 minute podcast interview, and so. Um, but there is a, a disconnect when you listen to those. <clears throat> there is a a. Uh, uh, s- something that's missed about not being in the room with another person, especially when you're asking them 
questions and you're trying to interview them. And so, um, you know, I think even from a, from a, not just a gaming standpoint, but from a production standpoint, the fact that we have physical items and we have, mm -hmm. you know, these killer dice towers from Elderwood Academy. Uh, and if you go, if you guys come on Sunday, we're giving away how many? I won't tell you. Because then you'll just come and be like, maybe there's infinite dice towers. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to tell you. But I will say that if you come, I am going to be turning to the crowd at key points in the game. And I'm going to say, and you tell us what happens here. And then you're going to raise your hand and I'm going to choose you. We're going to bring you up on stage. You are going to make a key decision in the game. And then you're going to get a dice tower. They're about $150. So yeah. they're really, really good. They're very nice. Good, they're like good <coughs> dice towers. Yeah, laser cut. Like the wood is laser cut. They've got magnets in them. They're wrapped in leather. Rare earth magnets on the top and the bottom. Yeah. yeah. They're incredible. I don't so. know where this rare earth is, but it's, <laughs> well, it's a, hard to find. It's that's a lot thing. fancier it's than our very earth. Very rare, you know? Um, but there's a lot of magnets there. I think that's their number one export is <laughs> it magnets. It has to be, yeah. Um, magnet tourism, too, I think. <laughs> I think so. People yeah. just going to see the magnets. Yeah. You, know? you got to gotta go get it from the source. <laughs> anyway. anyway uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, being being in person, having the 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 the, the physical uh, uh, affects of that, you can hear it in the microphone. You can hear the dice being rolled. You can hear the pieces being moved. But it does introduce a lot of sort of problems if you want to start recording this. Um, I think it's a lot easier to have to to record. And if you go on YouTube and just type in like D and D game, what you're mostly going to see are people who are on Skype, and there's like four people in four different rooms somewhere around the world. And they're all talking to each other on Skype because it's easy. I mean, it's yeah. very you know a lot easier to do that. Yeah. So, and I mean, if that's what you if that's what you can do, because you, we've got friends that don't live in our city and or state and or country. Frankly, you know, there's there's absolutely. Uh, I, I just met Leon Cairo, so that, I yeah. I now have a friend who lives in Italy and also cosplays as uh, All Might. Yes. And I feel like I'm better than you. A little bit. <laughs> well, you were before that, too. Oh, awesome. Okay, good. I just, you don't have to remind me every day. <laughs> it's a little heavy-handed. Um, I'll try to be more subtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, in, in the end, you know, uh, for podcasters, uh, content is king. Consistency is for sure queen. And uh, be, being able to, to churn that out uh, on, a, on a consistent basis, uh, which we don't do. Uh, but uh, it's just part of the Dungeon Booth experience. Uh, <laughs> is, waiting is waiting for six months for the next game. Yeah. Good things come to those who eventually forget about it and then get surprised <laughs> by their podcast app one day, just completely out of the blue. Or you can follow us on Twitter. I'm not telling you how to live your life, but we'll let you know when it's coming. So, geez. <laughs> I'm not trying to blindside you, but um, you know the 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 content is uh, you know will definitely dwarf even the quality. Um, now we have the benefit of me being completely hyper obsessive about quality, and uh, also being able to accomplish a, a, a lot of very fun things uh, for for me to get to do. Um, if any of you guys have questions on like where I get sound effects, how I source that stuff, you know, let me know. And that can be fun just in your regular game. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of inexpensive soundboard apps uh, that you can get. You don't have to use this giant conflagrated mess that I use. Um, there's a I have a whole piece of hardware that sits out to the side with 64 colored buttons that I can mash so I don't have to touch a mouse or the screen or anything like that. So that's specifically why I use this. Um, but, you know, even if you guys are just playing and you have speakers, it's cool to put on, you know, dungeon synth music and, and fire up sound effects and all that kind of good stuff. It's just way cool. So, um, and, you know, we can totally talk about that. That will be fun. If you have questions on equipment, if you guys feel like, this is something that you want to get started with, or we already do it, but I want to do something more or better. I want to. If, if you have more questions about being a pet hitman, I mean, yeah. I, I feel very. I feel like I'm probably the only person who's thought about it as much as I have. Yeah. So, so like, if you're like, what caliber is too big for a sugar glider? Well, and here again, ask Christopher Wakeham. Here, here again, 
you don't have to ha use any firearms. These are pets. Uh, you know, poisoning, absolutely viable, okay? And, yeah. I, and we'll, we'll talk about poisoning. I'm okay with that. Let's talk about it. So. I thought you had more style than that, frankly. <laughs> um, I mean, if you're not sniping hamsters, <laughs> what are you doing with your life? Can uh, you imagine what would be left behind? Just nothing. <laughs> Well, you use a very small gun. It's like I'm, this big. <laughs> I'm not an idiot, Chris. Jeez. Um, I'm just going to say, I feel like you've got a lot to learn about being a pet hitman. That's all. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. But Fair enough. You're probably right. Yeah, do you guys have any questions about any of, any, any of the above? Yes, sir. Yeah. Like, well, we're big guys, and it's going to get hot in there. Yep. Yeah. So it's a problem. Yeah. Is there any like, advice on that situation? I mean, you can tell them what we did, because we had the, sort of the same situation. Yeah. We're, 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 we're in a very uh, live room when we record. Um, and let me just tell you if, you, if anybody here is struggling with audio quality for anything, 99% uh, uh, of the time, it's your room reflections are killing you. And even in here... Like, there's about a, a 26 second slapback echo from when these speakers make this noise to that back wall coming all the way back up here. So, as you. Hey! As you, uh, a, a, as you uh, try to record, the microphone isn't intelligent. Our brains filter a lot of that stuff out, and just. It's sort of like when you go outside and your night vision adjusts. When you get in a room, you're blocking out the AC noise that's going on right now. Can everybody hear that? Now that I pointed out, okay, your microphone will not. And uh, the room reflections, all the little uh, like chittery sound effects from people moving in their chair and all that kind of stuff. The mics get all of that, and it's awful. Uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the things that you can do, one of the things that I see is sort of a mistake with podcasters is uh, a lot of people start out with a nice big studio style condenser mic or you see like a, a, a blue Yeti uh, that you can get at like Best Buy and something like that. Now, I don't want to say those are really great microphones. They are really, really good for the right space. A condenser mic in a treated room, great. A condenser mic in a live room, awful, don't buy it. You'd be way better off getting uh, a dynamic mic like this. This is probably a... 50 or $60 microphone as opposed to 100 or $120, yeah, $100 for a Yeti. And a dynamic mic is way less sensitive than a nice big studio condenser. And so a lot of that stuff that's bouncing around, this is already just going to ignore it because it doesn't care. The, the actual mechanics of the microphone is that this is a lot deader. So the, the ambience and the nuance of those sounds that would actually push the uh, the diaphragm inside of a large diaphragm condenser mic, it's not going to do that for this. Yes, I said diaphragm. I see some of you smirking out there. All right? Grow up. Grow up. This is a panel. Anyway. Grow up. This is a panel. Yeah. That's actually what I have that tattooed in Old, that's, old yeah, English was, on my that's, stomach. That's okay. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, getting, I, it, I know that it sounds weird to suggest getting cheaper equipment, uh, but a lot of times these dead dynamic microphones can fix a lot in a really live room. Foam is, is a really good problem solver. Uh, I normally try to look for the space that's going to work the best, and if that means that you know, it's it's hard because you have to sit around a table for D and D. It's not like oh, okay, we'll, we'll you know we'll just do it at the coffee table and then you know the couch is 16 feet b back you know because it's normally for watching TV. So that's you know that's problematic. Uh, one of the things that can help uh, is if you have a, a hard table like and it's in your kitchen and you have tile or hardwood in your kitchen and you just have drywall everywhere that's going to sound echoey af so uh you know try to move uh, upholstered things in there one of the things you can do uh is like if you can just get upholstered chairs or put rugs down on the floor um you know, the, the other moving thing, blankets are good too. Moving blankets are really, 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 good. really good. Yeah, and put uh, them up on the walls, and they're easy to put up and take down. Yeah, you know, so like uh, if you, you know, if your wife is like, 
why are you doing a Dungeons and Dragons podcast? You can be like, well, it's only going to take an hour and then I'll take it down. And then seven hours later, yes, you can take it down. Yes. Know? That hour was just for set up and tear down, but she didn't ask specifically. <laughs> didn't ask so that's specifics. on her. Sorry. Maybe ask a better question. <laughs> Get a better answer. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good strategy, by the way. <laughs> None of that was a good strategy. Anyway. Fair enough. Uh, did, did, did that answer your question? Yeah, cool. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, you ever found yourself in a situation where when the players take it off road and it's the most bizarre sound that you have to make that they just do and you don't have a sound effect, so you're just like, Yeah. So, well, and the first game we played, I it was late at night and I was amped up because I was excited because I get in the zone, you know, I get in the moment and I'll just start doing, the players are describing things and I'll just start doing sound effects with my mouth, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. which is fun for me, but also we listen to it later and we're like, well, that wasn't, that was weird. You sound you, like an insane are person. Are you beatboxing there? What, yeah. what was that? Yeah, exactly. it, w it was really funny because it's like, he, you know, he brings me on to add all this production value and it's like, and then you take your great action. It's like, oh, and it's like, so am I leaving that in, or what are we doing with that? No, you're leaving that in and putting an echo effect on it. Right, it's going to yes. be incredible. Oh, the echo effect. Uh, yeah, there's going to be stuff like that. And, you know, I will say, like, if it's not fun, then you're doing it wrong. That's the only time you're doing it wrong with D&D, &D, um, in my opinion. There's no right way to do it, but in my opinion, that's the wrong. That's uh, that's the wrong way to do it. Is if you're not having fun. So um, also, if you have to cue the machine gun sound effects, you are also doing it wrong. Canonically, canonically I believe. So I'm okay. not an expert, though. There are ways that that could be canonically accurate, but we're not going to go into that anyway. Um, I, I will say that uh, that it's sometimes way funnier for things to. I mean, you know this. It's it's more fun for things to go wrong than it is for them to go right. So if they're if they're doing stuff and it's weird and it doesn't make sense do sound effects that are weird and don't make sense you know mm -hmm. uh th here's the here's the number one rule of improv is you say yes and right mm -hmm. so D, D is improv with nerd rules and you just say yes and so whatever your players are coming at you with if, if you are trying to get them to go to the prison to free this important noble and all they want to do is uh talk to the guard at the front gate uh, and you can't get them past the guard at the front gate make the guard at the front gate the adventure I mean, it's hard, but mm -hmm. that's the fun of it is you get to be in that moment and really now you will get to a point where, you, where you'll be like, this guard starts looking at you because he has never talked to anyone for this long <laughs> in his entire career. He's been doing this job for 35 years and he, he looks really happy, but he's also starting to look confused because he feels like you might be an inspector with their internal inspection agency. And he's starting to suspect that you might be there to see if he is perhaps responsible for some of the thefts that have been happening around the area. Uh, you, you get the sense that perhaps he's getting very suspicious of you. And now, now the guard is perhaps suspicious because he's got something to hide, right? Um, and it just takes time. You, 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 uh, you seek out situations that challenge you as a storyteller, and then you allow those to, you're gonna fail. I've failed a lot. And so I, I've gotten in situations before where people are like, uh, I, I, don't, I don't wanna go there, you know? And, and, and as much as just because they wanna be in control. A lot of people don't have control, we, most of us don't have control in our own lives. Mm -hmm. And so when we get into these sort of uh, fictional mediums, we want to be God. We want to be the boss. We want to be in control. And so you have to let people do that because they want to do that. And it's fun to do that. But it has to be sort of, everything has to have consequences, right? So even if you don't have the right sound effects, if they're trying to do stuff that's like super weird, you can make weird sound effects. And then if they are, if, if you can tell it's turning into a power struggle, don't get into a power struggle with people. Just make it, give them what they want and then make it less interesting than what you think would be more fun. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, and I've definitely uh, so uh, our third game, which is still in production. Uh, it, yes, <laughs> but I did do I did do live uh, sound effects for the players at that one, and there were actually two moments in that where an event happened and I had nothing for it, 
And uh, uh, if you've never done audio before, I'm going to lock eyes with you for this one. And somebody goes, do we have that? And then turns and looks you in the face. And Who you're would like, do that? Who would do, do that to do you? Do I have that thing that we never discussed? <laughs> no, I do not. But thanks for asking. Uh, and so a terrible person would do that to you. Just an egomaniacal... <laughs> Just a piece of work, that yeah. guy. No, yeah. um, no. Uh, I- again, it was something that that the uh, that the players generated, mm-hmm. and um, you know that's such a stochastic thing to have to try to keep up with just instantaneously. Uh, and so <laughs> he did. He was like, it was it was a big fireball sound effect, mm-hmm. and he was like, do do we have that? I was like, nah, son. <laughs> We do not have that. Uh, not yet, uh, but we can in just a few minutes. And so the beauty of being a good editor is going back and fixing that in post. And uh, with every game, except for the game that we're doing on Sunday, we're going to have that luxury. Uh, all of our games are edited. So if we do hit a technical snag, we just stop down for a minute. And uh, you know, I'm usually pretty good about getting it fixed Usually quickly, we did have a, a snafu in, in game two that I had to restart my computers and all that happy jazz, but it, was, um, it, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. I think, um, it was bad for me because I'm just sweating bullets. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, but uh, yeah, so I do get into those situations, but, you know, if I wasn't doing everything in post, uh, and I won't be in this game, uh, I will have some sound effects that are really... N- not part of the the D and D lore. So if if somebody swings a weapon or picks up a weapon that I don't have, and they connect with somebody, you might hear a rubber duck sound or uh, just the sound of uh, I might play the the you know the Yahoo chocolate or Yahoo chocolate milk commercial. Yeah. Uh, and then just get the whole live stream shut down because that's copywritten. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. That's a bad idea. I'm gonna take that one back. Or I might uh, go. Uh, yeah. You pick up you pick up the ancient hammer. And you strike the dwarf in the back of the head, and it goes, bonk. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, if you want more riveting (laughs) production like that, you got to come on Sunday. Uh, We're lonely. We need you. You don't need us. We recognize that. Um, What else? Any other questions? I think we're running close to the end here. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Never tell your players it's going to be longer than four hours. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, they won't come. So uh, just tell them it's going to be less than four hours. Right, Felicia? Yeah. Uh, it's like on an airplane. You're always 30 minutes from takeoff. Thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> just <I think> eternally? <laughs> <laughs> I think our first game lasted, uh, what was it, like seven hours? Yeah. Six hours, seven hours? How long was the second game? I don't remember. It was still it was about two in the morning. Yeah, yeah, six, six or seven hours. So tomorrow, four hours, guys. I mean, this is going to be. Uh, no, we did pare it down significantly with the third game. We yeah, worked out really enough tight. kinks at this point that we can actually sort of deliver on that. Um, I think we were at five hours last time. Sorry, guinea pigs. Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> Sorry and thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. Um, it, so the he spends so much time pre-producing the game. Getting the story together, uh, getting all of the the, the artifacts and uh, uh, paper cutouts, maps, mm-hmm. all that kind of good stuff. I do nothing, uh, and then uh, about a week. And That's a half, not true. Well, a week and a half before <laughs> he will give me uh, uh, a rough outline uh, of the script, the characters, so I can start. You know, if if a character's more magic or they fight with their hands or they have this specific type of weapon or they're clad in armor or in Kyle's case they're very gassy uh, that gives me some time to work up a bank of of sound effects for that character and I actually have that laid out uh, here I have uh, three racks of fight sound effects here uh, and some are specific to particular characters some are specific to particular fights uh, that we're gonna have so some are character based some are scene based And And uh, also, you have to be willing to throw all of that out. Yeah, about half of this is not going to be used. I, I, you know, here's the trouble with with uh, if there is any trouble. The trouble with being a DM is, 
is uh, writers are like, well, you have to kill your babies. And what they mean is you got to write and write and write and edit and edit and edit. You got to edit. Oh, God, that's what they mean? <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple of phone calls to make you guys. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to edit. You have to kill the things you love the most. And, um, and that's why being a pet hit man. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you knew I was going to do good it Good callback. I was knew. not ready. You had to know. I liked it. You had to know. Quality. Um, and that's why with being a DM, it's like that times 10, though, because not only not only could you come up with like the scenario, you're just like, oh, this scenario is going to be good. And then you've got kind of the middle part and it's a puzzle. And this puzzle is going to be good. And then oh, the end game. Oh, my God, this is amazing. It's going to be good. And then you get to the first sort of location and you've kind of misread what your players want, you know, because ultimately you have to be driven by what they want. And. If they don't want that good thing, you know, you're going to have to come up. Now, I will say, I played a game recently where uh, the DM was pretty new, and we got to the end of it, and uh, it just didn't go the way he wanted it to. And he unveiled that he had this beautiful painted uh, pewter dragon that he brought with him inside this box. And the, like the whole game, there was this box behind him. We were all just like, what is this box? This is going to be interesting. Uh, we got to the end, and we basically short-circuited his big reveal of this awesome dragon. And uh, he was uh, he was kind of sad about it. You know, he was kind of put out about it. And uh, we were talking about it. I said, look, if I brought a beautiful painted dragon to the game, I don't care what any of my players are going to do. I'm going to find a way to get that dragon into the game, right? So you do have to be able to... Um, you have to be able to allow for them to go off the rails and still deliver the experience that you've planned for them, right? But it does mean that a lot of the stuff that you pre-produce and write and the sound effects that go with it just may not show up this yeah. time. Now, you can always say, like, okay, it didn't show up this time. I can figure out a way to get that into something down yeah, the road. Yeah, and we do like to recycle. And uh, before you feel yes. bad for me for... Uh, not using half of the sound effects I either made or downloaded, that means that half of the story that he spent weeks writing is also gone. Um, it happens. There were two it does. scenes in the first game that we just never got to. There was, uh, because of time constraints, and it was still seven hours long, there were uh, two scenes in the second game that we never got to. That we just, and they're right in the middle, and we just had to, I just had to put them aside. Director's and, cut. <laughs> Yeah. So, and game three, we got to almost everything, but it's because we're getting better at this. Yeah. So, and so, uh, just to sort of give you a production breakdown, uh, to give you a little better sense of time, I don't know how long it takes him to write the the story, um, especially the good ones. Um, but uh, the, I mean, eventually we'll have good ones, and then, yeah. and then you'll know. Here's hoping. Uh, no, but uh, so he writes that I have, uh, you know, probably eight to ten hours of pre-production, getting stuff ready, and that includes setting up equipment and everything like that. Uh, and then we actually have the game, uh, which is four hours times three, mm -hmm. and um, and then we go through a process. Uh, because he's sort of setting the tone and because he knows how he wants the, the story to be, uh, he's got editorial process. So I send him a file. He fills that, oops, he fills that full of cut markers. And uh, then I go in and essentially cut those out. And this is in Reaper. So yeah, this we, is, both have Re we both use Reaper. We go back and forth with these audio files. Yeah. And so um, then we, we don't do the whole... Uh, show as a batch. We typically do one episode at a time uh, and cut that into a 20 to 30 some odd minute episode. But we're going to try to change that for the next one too. Yeah, we are going to try to do it all in one big chunk. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. But you know, f for how long does it take you to mark an episode? I mean, it depends on the episode, but usually no, no less than a couple hours. Okay, so he, t he spends a couple hours. I usually spend two to three hours in post-production, but... Uh, that was all for episodes that had no sound effects triggered live. So I'm hoping that this time that's going to cut a whole lot of time out for me because I fired them in the moment instead of first two games, everything was laid in and post. Mm -hmm. They didn't have near the experience that uh, you'll get now. Just saying, you come back, you know. <laughs> It's going to be great. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm hoping that that will cut down production time. But, I mean, if we chopped up pre-production into however many segments. I would say it's probably uh, a six to eight hour process to, mm -hmm. to get an entire episode done. That's a 20 minute episode. Yeah. So, so uh, there, you know, but that's because there's so much production going on and there's so much just 
tightening stuff up editing wise there is an aspect of the dungeon booth that is not exactly like you're there playing the game uh there are some interactions that are cut out uh there are some people eating cheetos that are cut out mhm <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's great. I try to provide, you know, uh, as best I can. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's that's basically the, the run, and then we just get it uploaded, and we're we ready to go. we got five minutes. Anybody else got questions? Questions? Yes. I've got another question. I just wanted to say that it does, I want to say thank you for, like, all the hard work you put into it. Oh, wow. It does make a difference, like, listening to, I listen to a lot of different uh, role-playing game podcasts, and even with Critical Role, like, the, the Vox Machina series, it was really hard to listen to because the sound quality was, like, not good. But yours is, like, one of the top. Oh, wow. That's very sweet. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, yeah, I uh, I love doing it, and I love it. Uh, I, I love making it high quality. Part of it is I am recording really talented people, and these are people who talk into a microphone. Talk about the dungeon booth. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, the dungeon booth. Okay, all right. um, <laughs> but these people talk into a microphone all freaking day, and I feel like it would be an epic waste of their time uh, if they showed up and I half-assed it. Um, I feel that way with uh, a lot of the talent that I work with, and it's something that I've learned over time. As the production guy, I don't often get heard, and uh, if you've listened to any of this, you'll know why. Um, it's very apparent, but uh, uh, it, it would be a really big disservice, and my time is not worth more than anybody else's. So uh, I appreciate that you, that you hear that, and, and I appreciate you saying something that's very kind. He might keep doing this now. I mean, no, I'm still out, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> Peace. Uh, Maybe one more question, and then I think we're we're up. Okay, we're up. Thank you guys right, very thanks. much for coming. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it.